Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. I want to show you this beautiful little machine inside here. It's it's a few little uh, tweaks to an already made model by Quickmill. This is part of their range. They've extended it out and changed the cosmetics of the Quickmill Pipper. So the Quickmill Pipper's been around for a while. It used to come in stainless steel. Then they released it in a blackened timber, which is a beautiful finish. You've got that really solid, rich, dark um, hardwood timbers on a matte black finish. And this one here is the latest to join their fleet, which is, oh, oh, here we go. Quick little unveiling for you. Undo the little bag. Voila, look at that. A beautiful dark wood and matte white quick mill pipper. So we're gonna give this one a quick unbox and then we're gonna make coffee on it to show you what kind of coffee you'll get at home and just give you some of the details of why you would look at one of these machines. In the box, you can see you get your drip tray, the beautiful machine, lovely finished hardwood timber knobs. Um, we've got a water access point on the side here with a removable power cord. This is 1.8 litre water tank and it's a side load. So that's a little bit different to some other machines, but we'll fill that up and load that in on the side. In the box, you get a few little accessories. Okay, what do we got? Let's have a sneaky peek. Okay, well, you, you get a standard plastic quick mill tamper. So in the higher end ranges, you do get a timber handled one. You get a coffee scoop. A uh, single shot looks like a, what is it, about a seven gram basket, your backwash basket, which is really important to be able to clean. Um, you get a, a group head cleaning brush, underrated. Not many people use these enough. If yours looks like this at home, it should be like a shaggy dog, which means you're using it. And they have given you a double spout, beautifully finished timber handle. It comes with that, uh, looks like an 18 gram basket there. So nicely finished with that E61 style 58 mil tamper head handle. You've got the timber that matches the steam knob and the handle there. So we're gonna fill it up, plug it in, and we'll make a coffee. A lot of coffee machines do have the water tank which you have to remove your cups from the top to be able to access your, your three litre water tanks in there. Um, that can be a little bit challenging. So if you had overhead cupboards, um, that might be of an issue when you're trying to pull the tank out. Well, the Pippa here does have a side access tank. So you could just sneak it out a little bit, get yourself a container and fill it up. It's a 1.8 litre tank. Now, if you're gonna start the machine up for the first time, it is going to suck a bit of water in there. So you may want to retop that up. Now, the only negative to having a side uh, tank is if you do have your grinder on this side of the machine. You may need to move the grinder to be able to get access to the water tank. Now, that being said, with the steamer on this side of the machine, naturally, we would put our grinder on this side anyway, because we want to keep our grinds or our dry side on the left, work through by putting in our shots, and then we have our steaming and wet side on this side, where we're going to be preparing our milk-based beverages and pouring out. Like any machine, make sure you read the manual and understand how to turn them on for the first time. The process for the single boiler um, pipper is obviously make sure the water tank is full, Get yourself a milk jug, pop it underneath the steam wand, remove your group handle, pop it onto number one. We're going to open up our steam valve and then we're gonna activate our group cup, which is gonna get the pump to work. You're gonna see water come out into the jug from the steamer, which means the steam boiler or the water boiler is totally full. We're going to turn off the valve to close this off. We're gonna make sure water's still coming out our head and if we've got a great flow out the head, we'll turn that off. And now we're ready to go to button number two, which will start to heat up that water. While the pipper's heating up, we'll show you a few other little features. Down the front here, we do have a nice looking white background gauge there. That's gonna show us how much steam pressure um, the machine has. So you can see it's starting to rise up now when it's heating. And we do have a decent sized drip tray under here as well. So we pop out the top cover and we've got that removable tray there with a beautifully powder coated chassis. So they've taken that white matte look and covered every part they can, which is a great way to finish a machine. Um, this is our over expansion valve here. So that may drip into the tray a little bit. 
And if you do want to adjust the pressure of the um, pump, we can do that. Now uh, there's an expansion valve, which is just up under here. Pop a screwdriver in, and we can then adjust that pressure when we're brewing. As soon as you see that gauge coming up, we're up to about 10. Let's pop the handle back in so we can start to get some warmth into that handle so we're ready to brew our first coffee. Um, the styling and the details of the pipper are really nice. You can see beautiful, thin stainless steel um, cup rails, uh, an amazing mirror finish on here. It looks so, so great. You could do your hair if you need to or your makeup. Um, and then we've also got a cool touch steam wand as well. So it's great to see um, some of these safety features coming into entry level machines. The tips are still hot though, so be aware. So with a single boiler machine like the Quick Mill Pipper, you do need to understand how to use these machines properly. You have to choose whether you're gonna be using hot water to brew your espresso or develop steam in that boiler. So there is a, is a series of switches on here that you do need to understand. It's not as easy as a HX machine which has a boiler that can do everything, but the trade-off is, is about $2,000 cheaper. But you can still get amazing coffee. So let's have a look here and give you an indicator. The green light is showing that it's on, the um, orange light here is the element, and the um, next orange one down with the P means that the pump is running. On the other side, with these three switches, we're gonna be brewing coffee, having hot water, or generating steam. So depending what you want to do, you're going to flick the switch to make the um, appropriate element or part of the machine work. Now when you make the change from brewing espresso and then making steam, you have to bleed either the brew head or the steamer of the water, or vice versa. If you do this wrong, essentially you could put steam on top of your coffee puck or you'll go to froth and you've got a heap of water because you haven't yet created the steam. So I'll take you through this process now. The pipper has got a 450 mil hot water boiler and because we've turned it on the first time right now that boiler is full and we recommend that you do your espresso first then go and make some steam and that allows you to take some water out of that 450 mil um, allowing you to get closer and quicker time frames between brewing and the generation of steam. So to be able to brew coffee, there's a few little things that you'll need. Grab yourself a cloth. I've got our 20 grams of coffee already ground, a tamper, a tamp mutt, and I'm ready with my milk. I do recommend getting yourself prepared before you start this process so that you can get the timing of that finished espresso to being able to froth milk a lot quicker. Here is the jug I've got ready for milk, but I've got another jug here which I want to catch some of that hot water out of the boiler so that I can deplete it very quickly and get this machine to do some steaming. I'm gonna start by removing my handle. We wanna get it nice and clean and dry, get all the moisture out of those. I've got my 20 grams of coffee, pop it in. Give that a bit of a, a level out and a distribute. A nice flat tamp. One more little polish there. Great. And you can see that we're below the basket. We don't want to have too much coffee ever in a coffee basket. We want to have a bit of room for the water to expand that coffee and not be really hard to yank into a machine. So I'm going to load the handle in. We'll pop under our cup. And we're going to flick the brew switch here now. There you go. Look at that. The first shot coming out there, super rich. Really nice dark colors, a little bit of pulsing there, a little bit of fresh that's coming through on that extraction. This is a smaller cup, I don't want to go too crazy, so I'm going to shut that off about now. And I've got my espresso, so I've got to quickly think about what I'm going to do with the water. So I'm going to turn on the steam wand, and you'll see that the water is going to come out. I'm going to turn on the steamer and you'll see all this water starting to come out. So essentially that 450 mil boiler is letting the water come out. There's gonna leave a little bit of water left in there and that little water will create the steam that we're gonna to use to froth our milk. There you go, you can see now the process is happening. It's a double spout tip, which that one will be very hot. You can see we've got some steam now, so I'm gonna close that steam wand I'm going to remove my hot water out. Be careful of that one because it, it will be boiling. 
We're gonna grab our milk and let's froth. Again, cool touch wand. It's a really nice tip in such an entry level machine. Come on in close and let's have a look at this steam pressure. So there you go, this is a 600 ml jug. We wanna get the liquid spinning. There we go, just a little bit further out is better for this one. Get that vortex happening and start to, I'm gonna just change that angle a little bit. There we go, that's better. Get it spinning, lower it to get a hiss, introduce that foam. There we go, I've got a good amount of foam already, so now we're just gonna keep that spinning to get all those bubbles to fold back into each other. And now that's getting a bit hot. I'm gonna count to three, one, two, three, and turn that off. Make sure that you let that steam come out before you drop that jug. You don't wanna get a crackle on the, on the surface of your milk. Always remember to give it a good wipe and another purge so that no milk's gonna block up that steamer. Okay, so we've got our beautiful espresso there. We've got that silky smooth milk there. If you look at the side of the jug, you'll see how silky that milk is. There's a few little bubbles there, but nothing too crazy. Keep your milk moving. Allow it to rest just a little bit. And if you do get some bubbles on the top, give a bit of a tap. We're gonna swirl our espresso, swirl our milk and pour. There you go, a little bit wobbly there today, but uh, you can easily make a beautiful espresso and milk-based coffee quickly if you understand the process. So just quickly recapping, remember that you've got now the machine is at steam mode. If I wanted to brew another espresso, we would actually get steam out of this head. So we have to fill that boiler back up with water if we're gonna now do another espresso shot. If we use this double spout and split it between two cups, we could have had two espressos and we would have been able to use the steamer to then froth up for two cups. But if we're going to go back, as I said, you need to now fill the boiler back up with water so that you can get yourself uh, enough hot water to be able to um, repack this basket and extract another espresso and repeat the process I just showed you. Let's have a look at the coffee shot. Um, Look at it, it's beautiful, it's spongy, expanded beautifully. The extraction was nice, it was quite rich and dark at the start. So that's an amazing espresso. Uh, this is the grind setting that we have on our commercial grinder here in the bar. I didn't make any adjustments, so the Pippa um, vibration pump that's in here can handle a very fine espresso. So that's amazing to know. We're not gonna have to limit the quality of our grinder in an entry level machine. What we do find with entry level uh, machines like this, probably around that $500 mark, is the whole brew head here is actually made of plastic. And when you start to apply a coffee puck uh, expansion pressure and trying to get that real nine bar pressure, you can actually crack all of that plastic over time. It's not gonna happen in something like the Pippa because it's full casted metal, it's super durable and very easy to replace in the future if you did have a problem. One thing I like to look at when I compare a machine is if we did get enough pressure and a fine enough grind to ex extract the sweetness and the sugars out of the coffee. So when I knock out our coffee pucks, I'll always give them a bit of a, a wipe out and a clean, but then I'll remove the puck because I wanna see if I really did extract some sugars out of that coffee. And if you have a look on the bottom of your basket, it's a good identifier to see that caramelization coming out which to me signifies we've got the sugars out of that coffee. It means the, the machine had the pump pressure and the ability to actually brew how we want to. You can give it a smell and it does um, smell sweet, quite like toffee actually, this one. So for me, that's just a good little check to make sure that um, a machine can handle the kind of extraction that I'm looking for. So how does the coffee taste? Well, we'll give it a little crack. Look, that's great. It's tasty, it's rich. We've got really velvety, silky milk with that. Um, to me, that's probably about a seven and a half out of 10. All I'd do different was maybe dial in that recipe a little bit better to get it a bit finer and be more accurate with the recipe. Because that 20 grams, we'd be looking for 20 grams yield in the cup. I didn't use scales and I didn't re um, measure that one out, but it's tasty. Everyone's gonna be happy with that. So thanks very much for watching everyone now. 
what's the best way that you can support us on this channel? Well, if you're in Australia, we really do appreciate it if you buy our coffee. It's what we do. We roast coffee, we ship coffee all over Australia. This is the Champion Blend. It's what's used in our cafes. They absolutely love it, and we get fantastic feedback from their customers enjoying a coffee when they're dining in the cafes. So please jump online. We really appreciate the support. Uh, if you're watching from overseas, look, sorry, you can't get the coffee yet, but we really do appreciate if you can like and subscribe and share this with somebody who may be looking at an entry level coffee machine and weighing up between one of the, the plastic style uh, appliance um, branded coffee machines versus an Italian made, beautifully designed and well crafted machine. We sit around the $1,500 price mark here, so it's not much more when you consider the life you're gonna get out of a quality Italian machine versus a cheaper alternative. Anyway, any questions on the Pippa, please leave them down below. I'll happily answer those for you. Thanks very much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.